I'd say we're right about on schedule, actually. We were aiming to have them set up before you arrived. Traveler, Paimon, let's go fishing together. Whatever we catch, we can grill for dinner tonight. You got it! Dinner's on us tonight! <laughs> I hope I can contribute, too. The other Forest Watchers gave me some fishing tips a little while ago. I'm really looking forward to giving them a try. I saw some very appetizing mushrooms in the area, so I gathered a few for us. I'll leave them here along with some fresh fruit. Wow, camping with the Forest Watcher is the way to go! They think of everything! And even if they don't, they can improvise! This is true. I don't think I've ever had a single rough day in this forest. So? How has everything been going for you? Hmm. Well, there's been some high points and low points, but we've had some unforgettable experiences along the way. I see. Oh, in that case, you should try a Valberry. I bought some from the market this morning. A valuable suggestion. Just don't bury your feelings using food. Uh, all I wanted was to recommend something bittersweet. Oh, I have a sudden craving for fruit tea. I'm gonna go fetch some stuff. Bye! She sure made a run for it. Unbelievable! She made a run for it! Hmm. <laughs> So Kale chose the path of tactical retreat. Could it be she foresaw what shall soon come to pass? My dear friend, you know what I am about to say. <laughs> Excellent! A kindred spirit! A great warrior can sense when a duel is nigh. B but it looks like we'll get told off if we start playing now. Let's enjoy the nature for a while longer. Ah! We get a bite! I'll reel it in. Firewood, spices, snacks, and drinks. Everything's ready. Once Kale gets back, we can light up the fire and start grilling. There are three tents. Which one do you two want to take? Hmm... How about the one on the left? Well, Paimon just thinks the ambiance here is a little better. Hmm, true. But it's also the closest to the water. If there are any sleepwalking fungi around tonight, they might stumble into your tent. Hmm, well that's no good. <laughs> take my weapon. You can use it to bar the entrance. Anyone would think you were sealing the gates to King Deshret's mausoleum. Excellent. Then this tent will be an impenetrable fortress. I'm back! How's your appetites? Ready for the barbecue? Always. Oh, it smells so good. My mind's drooling. Someone sure is desperate to eat. Hmm. I think it's time to add the seasoning. How do you like your skewers? Well done? Medium? Rare? Wait, what? Isn't that just for steaks? Hey, if it works for steak, maybe it works for other things too. Medium well for me. Okay, these are about ready now then. 
It'll be a few more minutes for anyone who wants theirs well done. Oh, that was so delicious! If Paimon's stomach had space, she'd eat three more skewers. I ate a lot too. Oh, here comes the food coma. If you're tired, then go rest. You must be getting sleepy too, Paimon. Why don't you guys head to your tents? Sino and I will clean up. Tonight I show you mercy. Our sacred duel will take place another day. struggling to keep her eyes open. Oh, don't forget this. The staff of the Scarlet Sands. Uh, wait, you were actually being serious about that? It's a very powerful weapon. Try it. Paimon can't even lift that thing. Fair enough. You sure you don't want it? Yeah, Paimon's sure. We'll be fine. You get an uninvited guest in the night, Paimon will be here to take care of the traveler. <laughs> that reminds me of a parting king of invocations. I, oh, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But right now, it's time to rest. Sleep well and sweet dreams. I think they should all be here. Uh, Traveler? Paimon? Are you in there? Could you come outside for a sec? Look at this. What the... What's this sword doing here? Is it supposed to keep out intruders? Evidently. Uh, what? Who is it? Oh, what time do you call this? <gasps> Paimon's gonna take out the sword! Yeah! Kave, what are you doing here? It's the middle of the night. Sorry to wake you up at this hour of the night, but we've got a situation on our hands. Let's get dressed and talk about it outside. Something has come up, and since it pertains to Cyrus and Sino, I deemed it essential to inform you all. Whoa, whoa, back up. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Huh? Where'd the wine cups go? I could have sworn I left them here after I washed them. Ah, there they are. I'll have a cup too. Can you see if the cookies are still on the table? They are. And so are the fruits. Hmm... Ugh, oh, this is so bland. I should have gotten a few bottles of what Sino's group was drinking last night. Do tell. What were they drinking? Oh, right, I forgot to mention. So, I ran into Cyrus yesterday evening when I went to the tavern to pick up some things. He was hosting a dinner for Sino, Tainari, Kale, and the Traveler and Paimon. Anyway, they got a bottle of Lombard's new vintage for the table. At least, I think that's what it was. It looked pretty good. Hmm... Sounds like they're all tangled up in this. You know what it's about, right? Sixteen-year-old kid tried to extort Cyrus. He was asking for ten million mora. I heard some people talking about it on the streets, yes. Didn't take them long to catch the culprit. The sages are probably dealing with the case by now. <sighs> I wonder what Sir Nephis and the others will make of it. Oh, Cyrus showed me the extortion letter, too. It was crudely written, but the paper had this beautiful pattern on it that I've never seen before. Really caught my eye. Uh, give me a sec, I'll sketch it out for you.
Okay, done. Take a look. You see what I mean? I don't think I've ever seen writing paper like this around before. God knows where the culprit got it from. Hmm. Interesting. These are all motifs associated with the tribes of the desert. What? Really? Take this, for instance. Looks like an outline of a spire, similar to the kind found on some ancient palaces. And the crisscrossing and mirroring here. I recognize that too. It bears a striking resemblance to an ancient emblem, one that hasn't been used in a very long time. Whose emblem is it? It's the emblem of the Temple of Silence. After discussing it with each other, we both agreed that something didn't feel right. So we went looking for you. This was a long way to come from the city. Alhatham figured you were probably with Tainari, so Gandarvaville was our first stop. But the Forest Watchers told us that you'd gone camping. Then, just as we were heading off to the campsite, we ran into Sino. He said he was on a supply run. We exchanged a few words, and then he ran off. Uh, hold on, so what's the deal with that emblem you were talking about? The Temple of Silence, you said? What is that? Should we be worried? Is everything okay? Give me a second. L let me get Kale. So you've never heard of the Temple of Silence? Hmm. <laughs> well, to put it simply, it's an organization that has existed in Sumeru for over a thousand years. These days, you can find a Temple of Silence office in the Academia. Theoretically, it's responsible for the custody and disposal of information and documents not fit for public dissemination. At least, that's what they tell the outside world. In truth, it's essentially a vestigial institution nowadays. There's an office with their name on it, but it's functionally obsolete. Historically speaking, the original Temple of Silence is said to have been established by Hermanubis, one of the seven pillars of King Deshret and the greatest of all sages. Most of the organization's members hailed from the desert. By contrast, none of the Academia Temple's current members are from the desert region, nor do they use any symbols connected with the desert folk. So the Temple of Silence at the Academia is just a fake? Wow. It's possible. The real question is, why? My guess is they're covering something up. So how do you know all this? Sounds like some pretty top secret stuff. Did you forget? He did a stint as acting Grand Sage, and kept the pay raise even after he resigned. Oh, yeah! Paimon did totally forget about that. So you took the chance to read all the top secret documents while you were acting Grand Sage, huh? If you're asking me whether I familiarized myself with the documentation in my office, I would respond that that's a perfectly normal part of any job. So much about this doesn't make sense. Why did the emblem of the Temple of Silence appear on a threat letter from an academia student to Cyrus? The student's only 16, and doesn't have any family ties to the desert. So where could he have seen that emblem, or gotten the paper? You said you ran into Sino, yes? Did you tell him what you've just told us? Yep. He ran off as soon as he heard what we said. Given that Cyrus is involved, he's probably halfway through solving the case by now. Hmm. Still, we should try to catch up with him. At this hour of the night, Sino will probably go looking for Cyrus at his current residence. Hmm. If the Academia's Temple of Silence really does exist just to cover up the truth, the sudden appearance of this emblem can't be good. It's sure to stir up trouble. We should pay a visit to the Academia. Yes. As the Sage of Amorta, my master ought to know the truth about their office. You can ask him to tell you what he knows. The more information we have, the better prepared we'll be for whatever happens there. If this situation is connected to the real Temple of Silence, the emblem has to be part of a bigger conspiracy. Kale, could I trouble you to send a message to the core of 30? Tell them to keep an eye out for Sino and Cyrus. Traveler, Paimon, you two come with me. We'll go after Sino. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Cyrus has been living in the city lately. 
He rented a place near the field so he can keep an eye on his tomato plants. Then let's go look for him there. Here we are. This is the place. Huh, we might be too late. Looks like nobody's home. Oh, Sino moves fast. If he was here, he's probably long gone by now. I know that voice. Is that Tainari I hear? Ah! Professor Zahahadi! Wow, so it really is you. My goodness, whatever is going on tonight? We're looking for Sino. So, he's already been here. Yes, not long ago, in fact. He knocked on my door and asked if I'd seen Cyrus today at all. I told him the old fool left early this morning, and I hadn't heard him come back. So we went to his place, and would you believe it? He's gone. Goodness knows where to. It must have alarmed Sino, because he took off in an awful hurry after that. He never did explain what this was all about. <sighs> How serious is it? Well... If Cyrus isn't at home... Oh, it sure doesn't sound good. Professor, did you hear that a student recently tried to extort Cyrus? Why, yes. When I left the house that day, I noticed he was watering his flowers in the field in complete silence. He had a piece of paper clutched in his hand, and he looked lost in thought. I could tell something was troubling him, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. If Sino hadn't happened to visit him that day, he'd probably still be holding on to that thing. After seeing the letter, Sino told him to contact the Corps of Thirty, but Cyrus was very reluctant. He claimed it would only damage his reputation. Eventually, he relented, after much persuasion from Sino. Huh? Cyrus didn't want to report it? Well, that's strange. When we saw him, he seemed pretty okay with the idea of the kid getting his just desserts. As a former sage, it's possible Cyrus still has enemies at the Academia. That's why Sino was so insistent that he report the matter to the authorities. I was there while they were going back and forth over it. So Cyrus initially hoped to stop this from going public. But why? Oh, dear. What on earth has that old fool gotten himself wrapped up in? Oh, I do hope he's not in danger. Oh, I almost forgot. Sino left me this letter to pass on to you. He wrote it when he came by earlier. He realized you might come looking for him. Thank you. What does it say? Let Paimon take a look! <laughs> My friends, this is a rather complicated state of affair. Unfortunately, I cannot disclose more than that. I ask you to understand and accept that I had to act alone at this stage. Don't come after me. <sighs> yep, that sounds like Sino. Thank you, Professor. Please do not worry. We will do all we can to protect both Sino and Cyrus. Traveler, Paimon, let's head to the Academia and regroup. You're here? I thought you were going after... Ah, I guess you lost their trail. We went to Cyrus's house. No one was there. Sino got there before us, but he was long gone by the time we arrived. He didn't say where he was going? No. He left us a letter and told us not to go after him. Can't say I'm surprised. <sighs> Typical Sino. Anyway, some updates on progress on our end. I drew the emblem from memory again, but in more detail this time. 
I checked some ancient texts for a similar design. The one I found was a little blurry, but the similarities in the general form and certain details were clear enough to confirm a match. Yeah, and we're lucky we found anything at all. It turns out the emblem was all but lost to history. We scoured the entire Academia collection, and that book was the only one with a record of the motif. Meanwhile, Arav managed to get Uraka to disclose his source. The one who told him about Cyrus's embezzled funds was a young man from the desert. According to Uraka, he had a striking presence and was well-educated. Apparently, the two met in the tavern over a game of cards. The guy claimed to be in the city for business as part of a merchant caravan. Uraka was intrigued when he heard what his new acquaintance had to say and brought up the idea of extorting Cyrus for Mora. The guy encouraged him to go ahead with it, then handed him some pen and paper to write the letter. I see. So it could be that this person planted the paper intentionally. So, how do we find this guy? Did Uraka say where he is? He doesn't know. He claims not to have seen him since that day in the tavern. The man gave him some tips on how to carry out the extortion, but from then on, Uraka was acting alone. Nephis and Arov have gone to meet the Corps of Thirty and review the city's entry and exit records. Also, Nephis admitted that the Temple of Silence in the Academia is just a facade. The true Temple of Silence once came to the Rainforest to establish a collaboration with the Academia. But, as time went by, the Sages gradually became corrupt and foolish. The Temple of Silence felt that they could no longer trust the Academia and ended the partnership. They retreated back to the desert about 400 years ago. Ever since its inception, the Temple of Silence has been the guardians of King Deshret's civilization and belief system. They traveled throughout Sumeru, sequestering and guarding any wisdom that posed a threat to the people's livelihoods. At its roots, it was a legitimate and reputable organization whose purpose was to guide people towards the right path. The academia of the day knew that the split would damage their reputation if it became a matter of public knowledge. And so, they set up a dummy organization of their own to conceal the truth. Not only that, but they managed to keep up the charade for hundreds of years! So how did Cyrus become acquainted with the true Temple of Silence if they left centuries ago? I'll bet that's the question that bothered Sino. Probably why he went after him in such a rush. Whoever is behind this, Getting Uraka to extort Cyrus was only the first step of the plan. Their true goal in doing so was for Cyrus to see the emblem on the letter. He must have recognized it right away. That'll be why he didn't want to involve the authorities. He probably hoped to take care of the whole thing by himself. Unfortunately for him, Sino had other plans. Since the desert is where the Temple of Silence originated, that is in all likelihood where Cyrus went. I have to go after him. Really? Are you sure that's a good idea, with how you respond to the heat? Uh, why don't we send someone else? I should be fine, as long as I bring plenty of water. Besides, I just can't shake this ominous feeling that if we don't catch up to them soon... <sighs> Everyone, I have news from the Corps of Thirty. Master! Oh, so that's Nafis, Tainari's master? Oh, we're finally getting to meet him in person! It's a pleasure to meet you, Traveler and Paimon. Several independent eyewitnesses have reported seeing Cyrus and Mahamatra Sino leaving the city at different times. Both were heading in the direction of Caravan Rebot. I was going to suggest that you join forces with the Corps of Thirty in this case, however, as I'm sure you've already heard from Al Haytham and Kaveh, the Temple of Silence is involved. The Academia has made a number of decisions throughout history that I am ashamed to talk about. It may well be that no better choice was available to them, but those actions are nonetheless a stain on our legacy. I won't attempt to make you understand the Academia's perspective. Now is the time for action. I understand where you're coming from, Master. But I'm afraid the situation might be more complicated than we thought. I think we need to keep a low profile, or risk making things worse. Good point. If Cyrus is involved with the other side, or worse, if he's fallen into their hands, and... Uh, everyone, we have to get Cyrus and Sino back safely. We cannot afford to lose them. Need our help? Whatever you need, we got you covered. Really? Wonderful. You have my most sincere gratitude. Arav and I will continue to follow up on the lead from Uraka. Kaveh, Scribe Alhatham, 
I'd like to ask you to cover the duties of the House of Dana. Tainari, you are planning to go into the desert, correct? I am. Kave, I'll be okay. You stay behind to help Master and I'll hate them. Well, if you're sure, okay. But be careful. Thank you all. Arav, let's go. You'd better get moving. Don't forget to ask for help when you need it. Will do. Let's go, Tainari. Hopefully we can catch up with Sino before it's too late. Knowing him, he's probably covered a fair distance already. But we still have a shot. Let's take it. Yeah. <laughs>